Hello everyone, so uh, making another quick video, which I guess the, the jumping off point is drawing swords from the right again, but uh, it also gets into a lot of stuff about tactics with specifically shield walls. So uh, as I said, it started off with drawing from the right hand, which was when I was talking with uh, people about this again, because that's what I do, you know, nothing but uh, history all the time. So uh, one of the things that uh, I heard was that you couldn't draw from the right hip because when you do, you would knock into anyone in formation with you. That uh, as you draw from the right, your, your arm moves out too much and you end up smacking anyone in formation to your right. And uh, I have another, a, a number of problems with this. First, if you look, uh, you draw mainly vertical. You're not, you know, turning it sideways and drawing out. You're drawing just straight up. So your elbow does stick out a bit, but not that much compared to, uh, if you imagine drawing from the left, you can't just draw vertical, especially with larger swords like this, or it's very awkward to and opens you up. So instead, you draw horizontally. If you see with uh, a sort of horizontal draw, you bring your entire arm out. Whereas, give me a second, ah, if you draw from the right, just extend your elbow. So you end up with even less uh, horizontal movement drawing from the right. So I would argue it's uh, if any way to draw is disruptive to formations, it's going to be drawing from the left, not drawing from the right. And uh, a few other things. First off, formations weren't that dense. They simply couldn't be. So, if you look at me, uh, battle formation, I can pull my shield like this, like this. Uh, I think this has a little less vertical uh, because I don't have mine as a perfect circle. So, let's go like this, just for argument's sake. So I stand like this, and even though you stand sideways, I definitely have more of my body to the right than the left. So if you look at the back, I have my arm moving away from the body, and then some extra one on top, like this. So even though just about all of my torso is covered from the shield, I do have a lot sticking out at the left, which means when you're drawing a sword, you have a decent amount of room. And that's assuming we're shield rim to shield rim, which I don't quite buy. So uh, a lot of reenactors you'll see where they're shield rim to shield rim, or even more often overlapping shields, taking that the little bit of overlap and putting it onto the guy's shield there. You notice you never see them fight like that. They'll get in that formation, overlap, show how cool it is by having somebody with a spear or an axe walk down the line and hit it with it and show, aha, this, this isn't breaking anything. And uh, yes, it's, it'll be a lot harder to break something, but it, it's still hard to break something in general. So my shield here is, well, uh, honestly, it's about as sturdy as they come. This is just, half inch thick plywood with a nice, with a very good amount of paint on it on both ways. Most would be a little thinner or thinner at the edge, but as thick in the middle and then it'll have canvas or something on it. So this is still a decent representation of a shield. It is very heavy and very sturdy. I have no doubt in my mind that it would take quite a few bashes with an axe to be able to do this much damage, especially if you're as they normally do hitting like that rather than coming down on the rim, which would be easier. So uh, I, I don't buy that you need that protection. Also, it prevents you from fighting. Because if I stand like this and I'm fighting, I can take nice, great big slashes from side to side. And uh, if I'm in a dense formation, sure, I won't have that much room, but I can come down. Oh, that was best idea, so I'll move over a bit. You can come down and hack like that. You can still get a few good stabbing angles in. But now imagine that 
this little central area is covered with another person's shield. So if I hack like that, I'm just slamming against that rim and hurting myself. I can stab like that, and uh, I, I don't feel the same strength as a nice stab like that. But I can stab under, but it has to be very under, and uh, unless I'm putting my whole body down, I can't stab up, so I'm just stabbing at feet. Uh, so that's where reformation really prevents you from being able to fight. So even in the Titus formation, which I was in at uh, a LARP event, so it's not the best example, but we only had a little bit of space between, between uh, the map enough so I could stab like that. So sort of uh, imagine an imaginary line around here as I do this, and hopefully I'll be able to end up winning, but I, I doubt that. Uh, I only was a movie maker. So if you imagine that line, so remember there's a line so I can keep stabbing around there before my buddy shield room comes in. And then from his shield room, he has probably a blade's length and a half of room between shield rim to his elbow. Then from his elbow to his actual torso, you have uh, quite another bit of space. I didn't really come close to that line, I suspect, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to see that. It's, it's a very quick and a very neat motion drawing from the right, whereas drawing from the left, I don't actually have my scabbard on the left, so hopefully that's uh, close to it. Again, I have to bring my entire arm into the motion, so I suspect I'm still not crossing that line, but, I'm cl but I believe I'll be closer to crossing the drawing from the left. So, now I'm going to put this back in. So if you are in a, a dense formation like a shield wall or a testudo, or whatever. I still don't buy students in battle, or at least not fighting them. You might use them in battle if you're doing a river crossing or something just to get closer without arrows and such. So if you're in a dense formation, drawing from the right is probably the better motion. It's, it's less disruptive to your formation. But no matter what side you're drawing on, you, you really don't have to worry about it if you have enough spacing to keep fighting. And uh, yes, you had some formations that would fight uh, with overlapping shields, like a, I uh, uh, can't think of the word right now, like the, the ancient Greek formations, the phalanxes, that's it. And uh, the sword that they would have would be used a lot less. They would sort of, even if they did do an overlapping thing, you know, they would keep using the spear. The spear was the primary melee reference, I suspect they wouldn't uh, be quite as eager to drop their spears and pull out their swords as a, uh, as a Dark Age formation might. But, uh, yes, that, that's my conclusion. Drawing from the right, from, uh, drawing from the right is not disruptive to formations. If anything, it's less disruptive from drawing on the left which could be a good reason to keep drawing from the right. Like we know the legionnaires drew from the right and uh, they were probably in denser formations than uh, any sort of dark age army would be. So uh, as I keep doing this, I'm becoming more convinced of right drawing. And I'm not saying that left drawing is inaccurate and uh, if you want to go for it, then hey, you know, do whatever, you can't prove us wrong. But uh, I'm definitely becoming more convinced that drawing from the right is a thing. And also, something I touched up on in an earlier video, formations were not that dense. Uh, you would always need room to fight. It would be like uh, any sort of sports team. Yes, if you crammed all of your defense in uh, American football right together, it would be harder to knock through them. But none of them could actually play the sport if they're that tight. It's the same thing, except not being able to fight means not just you, you lose the match, but you are at the very least injured, you're most likely dead. So being able to have that room to fight would have been very important 
So uh, I guess that's what I'm saying. Formations weren't as tight even in a shield wall. And drawing from the right is not disruptive to that sort of tight formations. And as I mentioned, I had never seen anyone actually fight with that overlapping shield wall. I've seen people fight in tight formations like I described where there's very little space between, just enough to fight. But uh, so if you happen to have fought or seen people fight in reenactments with the overlapping shields, I'd be very interested for you to give, give out that information in the comments. And if you happen to have any footage of this, uh, that would be extremely interesting. And please send me that or link to it in the comments as well. Uh, thanks for watching and leave comments.